you, Gore Verbinski. A Cure for Wellness is a psychological thriller directed by Gore Verbinski. Now, Gore Verbinski is the director of the first couple of Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I really like the first one. It's a fun flick. He also did The Ring back in the day, and that movie scared the pants off of me. I saw the trailer for this movie, and I was immediately really excited, despite the fact that it looked a lot like Shutter Island. I love Shutter Island, so there it is. Well, I saw it, and here are my thoughts. First off, I'll just quickly talk about the premise. So our main character is a guy named Lockhart, who's played by Dane DeHaan, and he's like a young financial executive from New York, and he's sent to this wellness spa in Switzerland, in the, in the Swiss Alps, to retrieve the CEO of his company. Prior to the start of the film, the CEO checked into the wellness spa and has written back to the company saying he's not coming back, they need to move on without him, hence Lockhart going to get him. Well, Lockhart gets to the establishment, he gets to the spa, and immediately things don't seem quite right. It's clearly only for extremely wealthy and elderly people. He sees them playing croquet on the lawn and engaging in water polo and what have you. And a couple of them tell him that once people check in, they generally stay for the rest of their lives. It's like some kind of creepy Swiss Hotel California. Living it up at the Swiss Hotel. After being denied access to his boss, Lockhart meets the director of the spa, Dr. Vollmer, who's played by Jason Isaacs, who then tells Lockhart about the basis of their treatment at this particular facility. It's this kind of magical water that is found in an aquifer beneath the spa's facilities. Okay, so uh, Lockhart starts drinking the water and very quickly seems to start hallucinating. And this is where the movie starts getting very, very bizarre. We don't know what's real. We don't know if he's hallucinating. We don't know if he's losing his mind. We don't know if perhaps there's some kind of conspiracy or people out to get him. We just don't know. That's pretty much all I'm gonna say about the plot for now. I do really wanna talk about the visuals and the cinematography in this movie because it is one spot where this movie absolutely excels. The visuals in this thing, there are a couple clips in the trailer that are just absolutely astounding. There is a shot where we see a train that Lockhart is on going along the tracks and then curving into like a mountain tunnel. And Verbinski attaches the camera to the exterior of the train looking along the length of the train and he captures the windows reflecting the mountain valley on this side. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's another shot where Lockhart is taken into Vollmer's office. The establishing shot that we get of the office is reflected in the black eye of a taxidermy deer that's hanging on the wall. And it's got this kind of fisheye lens look. It's really, really cool. It's very, very inventive. I was very, very impressed by the, the visuals of this film. The acting is decent. It's not anything spectacular. I would say Jason Isaacs was the standout. Mia Goth and uh, Dane DeHaan do decent jobs, but again, it's nothing nothing to write home about. And why would you why would you write home about the performance of an actor? And like, don't you have something better to say to your parents? Jeez, man. The pacing of this movie is a bit of a nightmare. The movie is almost two and a half hours long. And for two hours, it moves very, very slowly. Not necessarily a bad thing. And for the most part, I was I was into it, but there were times where I was getting kind of bored and looking at my watch. You could have chopped a half hour out of this movie. You wouldn't have lost anything necessary. And I think that's what they should have done. It did not need to be as long as it was. The music in this flick is pretty cool. It's pounding and intense when it needs to be. It, it, completely backs off when it needs to. And there's this one, my favorite piece in the whole movie, there's one sort of soprano aria that functions as a leitmotif for the Hannah character. And that works really, really well because it, it, uh, it tends to sort of solidify her sort of childlike character. And it works very nicely. But the sound design in this movie, you should write home about it. It's amazing. It was one of my favorite things about the flick. There is one sequence, and it's a very creepy sequence, where a character who's on crutches is wandering through a steam room and maybe hallucinating a little bit. We don't really know what's going on. It's very creepy. There's no music in the scene that I recall anyway. It's hard to see what's going on. And the only sound is the creaking of the crutch under his arm. And that doesn't sound that cool but it works so well. It's really, really unsettling. And I can't, I can't back this up with fact, but I think from, to my ear, it sounds to me that they use the exact same wave file of that creek with every creek. So it sounds precisely identical each time. And it really is unsettling. And if that's what they did, that's a really, really clever idea. And I'm very pleased with it. 
I do have to say there is a little bit of body horror in this movie. I'm not a big fan of body horror. I think it's kind of grotesque and obscene and just gross, but not scary. There are only a couple of sequences in this movie and they did fit the narrative, so I can't fault the filmmakers too much for it. But there was one sequence where I was just kind of in the theater. I was just, oh, no, oh, don't do that. Don't do, don't do that. There's also a rape scene and it's, I mean, it's it's disturbing. I, obviously, it's disturbing. It's a rape scene, but they it, it gets taken too far. And I'm gonna come right out and say it <clears throat> because it, it should be said. There is a moment where the would-be rapist uses his finger and then gives one of these. So, oh, come on, man. Did you guys have to go there? Like, I understand you're trying to make the point that this guy is like a despicable dude. I get that. I also get that because he's raping somebody. But that's like too much just from like, it's borderline mustache twirling villainy and it, it did not need to be there whatsoever. Now, many of you, if you've seen the trailer for this movie, and I, I did mention it earlier, you may see some parallels with Shutter Island. And like I said, Shutter Island is a movie that I love it might be my favorite Scorsese film. I am not saying it's his best film, I would not say that, but it might be my favorite. I absolutely love that flick. And this movie does, at least for the first two hours, really mimic Shutter Island a lot. Shutter Island's better. Um, you may be coming to the conclusion that I, I didn't end up liking this movie very much at all, and you would be correct. Suffice it to say, call this, uh, Shitter Island. Yeah, I think that works. So let's just talk about the ending. I'm gonna wrap this up really quick, but while Shutter Island was two hours of really interesting stuff and then a twist that was kind of spoiled by the Shutter Island trailer, but it was also kind of a red herring because you think you know exactly what the ending is, but then there's so much more to it. This movie, I had no idea where it was going. For two hours, even though I was a little bit bored at times, for two hours I was sitting there going, oh man, what is the payoff gonna be? I can't wait. And then it happens. And it's so stupid. It's so dumb. Like, good on them for trying to do something different. Why this was the different that you tried to do, I don't get. But it was so dumb, it was so antithetical to the rest of the movie, it was so completely, tonally different to the rest of the movie that it felt like, it felt like some other filmmaker came on and slapped on an ending. And I don't understand how this movie got made. And it's really upsetting because for two hours, I was on the hook, I was totally into it. It looks beautiful from a technical standpoint. It's an amazing, brilliant film with an ending that is so dumb that it completely ruined the movie for me. I left the theater angry. Usually when I see a movie that ends up sucking, I leave the movie just kind of like, well, that wasn't very good. Not this time. I was mad, I felt like, you guys stole 13 bucks from me. You guys wasted two and a half hours of my time. You guys made me think I was about to see a really good movie and then punched me in the face. So what's the verdict? Well, let's see here. I don't have a proprietary rating system yet. So let's see, I'm gonna give Shitter, I'm gonna give A Cure for Wellness a go watch Shutter Island instead out of 10. So that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I would also love it if you'd give it a like, give it a subscribe, send it to your grandma. I don't know. Does she watch YouTube? Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Later.